Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, welcome to the channel if you're new. Uh, my name's Alex O'Neill, although the people who are uh, following me regularly know me as Chan Morris and I've worked on over 150 films in roles like producing, I've also done a bit of directing here and there, I've also uh, been mainly involved in music for films and I've done my fair bit of acting as well. Uh, I like to make my own sort of things and uh, I'm not really a serious filmmaker but more of a hobbyist, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the major problems that I've encountered in filmmaking. Um, so I'm going to just start off with uh, a little series called Dexter. Now, if you've never watched Dexter, you should definitely watch it. It's a fantastic series. Uh, and one of the two cameras which uh, they, they mainly talked about when they were talking about the making of Dexter Whereas the Arri Alexa, which as all of us will know, is a really high grade camera and you've also got the Nikon D800, which as many of you may know is now going for quite cheap online. And um, my main problem with filmmaking is that there is this gigantic uh, society where people constantly attack each other and they attack the film equipment that people are using and I think that that's a really really negative thing to do for a start but secondly I don't think that the camera makes the man and I think Dexter shows this very well one of the things about Dexter that's fantastic is they use the D800 on a large proportion of the of the shots in in the series and the D800 if you look at the camera specs now it's getting a little bit dated it's still a really good camera and you can get it for around about five six hundred pound um, or if you get it used you can get it even cheaper which is absolutely phenomenal considering the uh, grade of quality that you get from the shot and the main reason I wanted to bring this up is I always used to be a camera competitor so when it came to using cameras, at the moment I'm shooting myself on a PXW X70, got it the minute it came out, it was massively expensive, I ended up paying all in all 2700 for it, it's now going for 1200 alright, so it's still the same camera, but it's now a lot cheaper, uh, and a lot, cause the thing about technology is the prices just go down, down, down and down, um, which is absolutely great. But I also invest, I've invested in my life, um, sorry, 16,000 and 18,000 on cameras. And that is not a good thing. So that's cameras, lenses, things like that. Um, I was always getting the biggest and the best that I could afford within the price range. And it turns out that it's not actually necessary because in terms of, I would always focus on the camera. I, I would never focus on lighting. I would never focus on any of the important things. Because I was an indie filmmaker, I was starting out and it was always a bit, who's got the biggest camera when it came to film club, things like that. And it was just like, I used to enjoy bringing in the really long lenses, you know, so that you know someone brought out their lens, I had something longer, you know. Uh, so you have this sort of competition thing going. And I know it sounds really, really silly, but, um, when it comes down to it, I bought my AF-101E because it was going to be the DSLR killer, it was going to be super, it was going to be fantastic, it was going to be amazing, it never got updated, um, and Panasonic absolutely screwed me over on that one, they didn't even sort out the warranty, so yeah, avoid Panasonic by the way, but um, no, <laughs> not being serious there. The thing is, what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to a camera, the D800 is a great model to sort of look at and think, you know what, if I can afford this within an affordable price range, this is going to give me good quality, it's going to give me a great sort of a great sort of shoot. And the thing is, I'm not using my personal experience here. I'm using the personal experience of every person who's used a D800 and says it's amazing, because the camera itself is amazing and it can get some really good looks. The Canon 650D Make, has made been involved in so many different films and that is really cheap right now. I don't even know what it is. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it's like that camera was a staple of filmmakers. The Canon 550D was a staple of film uh, filmmakers. So the D800 by Nikon, it's it's really really good camera. And the thing is, there are so many people every day constantly talking, oh, we need a bigger camera, we need this, we need that. And remember when the Red Epic was new and everyone had to have one. It's just like, you don't need to have a Red Epic, you don't need a Red One, you don't need a Red camera to do something amazing. Because the thing is, another thing which is really annoying is, you've got these filmmakers, they've got such good cameras, and what they do is they shoot in, they shoot in, the, in the, these massive files, and they, they edit it, and it takes such a long time, and they just drop a, a lookup table over it and screw the footage completely because they don't know what they're doing. And believe me, I know what it is to screw the footage using L L LUTs. It's like a couple of years back, I used LUTs, um, lookup tables rather, to um, 
and basically scramble the footage for my crappy science fiction series. And that is terrible, by the way, and I really hope some of you guys watch it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, you've got these people who are using this high quality equipment and they're totally destroying their, their, their image in the, in the processing, they don't know what they're doing, and they think that the camera makes the film, and that's absolutely not true. Now, I have never made anything good. This is, this is really important. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. I've spent a lot of money on cameras and on lenses, and I'm a terrible filmmaker. I, I, I only recently started focusing on the lighting that I would use in films and, and making things, um, you know, trying to make things look really good. I still want to make a really good horror film at some point. is I'm not there as a person, I'm not doing the right research, I'm not studying, I'm focusing on the wrong thing which is the camera. Now if you can afford a good camera that's great, but it's much better to afford a cheaper camera, get some good quality lights and basically work on lighting the scene, making the scene look good, because even with a low quality camera you can get really really good looks. Something's really damaged the console room. Your endless capacity to state the obvious amazes even me. We're talking a bit about shooting on a lower quality camera, so um, most of the time you're going to be shooting in 8-bit. That's uh, 1024 colours, which is being used up by your RGB, which is absolutely fine. You can increase the power of your uh, film by, inc by basically reducing that to monochrome, so you've got 1024 colours that are all being in your grayscale, which will basically give you a much better quality of footage. You can also take your 1080 and you can, down you can downgrade that to 720. Now a lot of people will say, oh you've got to film in 4K, you've got to film in whatever the heck the new standard is. Well, uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, if memory serves, was shot, uh, had huge amounts of uh, footage shot on the Thompson Grass Valley Viper cam, that was shooting in 720, so, um, you know, it, it got awards for cinematography. They didn't, you know, that, that, that's not a, a 4K camera. So the fact of the matter is, it's, when it comes down to it, people will argue and they will tell you, you need, need, need camera, you need tech, you need all this stuff. What you really need is you need good lighting, you need a solid look for the things that you're working on. I'm not a professional. I do this as a hobby. But one of the things that I've learned after blowing huge amounts of money on tech, I've rented high quality cameras, not been able to process the footage, is it is much better to use something which you can easily film with, you can get the footage and you can afford more things. You can afford better props, you can afford things to make your films look better, you can afford better lighting, you can afford better gels, you can afford better equipment, you can get a steady cam. There are huge amounts of different things you can do if you're working on a budget and you do not have the money to afford something which is high quality. And the thing is, with the, with the D800, considering going all the way back to Dexter, being used to shoot some of the most amazing footage, um, what can I say? Do you really need to blow thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on things? Not really. Don't do what I did, don't waste the money. What you should do is ideally focus on just making the films that are important to you. Use the money to make good films because those films will bring in money then you can make more films. That's the way that things should be going. And then when you've got the money you can invest in the big tech because you'll be able to afford it. But what have I learned? I, I've spent, I've blown so much money in my life it is unbelievable. So what I would ideally recommend is take away, think about it and basically look at the D800 as a model and maybe look at models which are similar. Looking back at the AF101E, despite the fact that I have huge problems with it, it can create some amazing looking images and on the right hands with a little bit of work you can still make a really good film out of it. PXWX70, that is a good camera. I've been using this one for a very very long time. 
I initially thought it was better than the AF-101E, but it doesn't have the power of interchangeable lenses. And that's, that's another thing. Watch how much you spend on lenses, because if you if you go into the shop and you, ta you take a couple of lenses, go into your local camera shop, take a couple of your lenses, you'll notice that the 50mm cheap lenses aren't that much worse than the uh, high quality ones and it doesn't really affect the image that much especially if you're just starting out you don't really want to focus on that because you can still get a good looking image and there's always a sweet spot with every single lens that you can just really really get a good look out of it anyway I'm rambling things have gone on far too long and you're probably all bored to hell of me anyway I hope this has been helpful uh, this channel is usually used for music by the way I'm just gonna make a couple of these because I just need to just get this stuff out and I've lost <laughs> I've lost access to my old filmmaking channel. So um yeah, wow. That was a huge load of incompetence, wasn't it? Anyway, you have a fantastic day and uh, I'll catch you later. And if you want free music, you can go to my website, you can download anything, use it for free in whatever you like. I'm not a great musician either. Can't make films, can't make music, can't do anything, but I can advertise, which is quite weird considering I can't really do it well for myself. Anyway, small world, isn't it? Catch you later. Bye.